and a very warm welcome to yet another fascinating edition of the program, CAC Weekly, a weekly program that keeps you abreast on the achievements and activities of the Corporate Affairs Commission. My name is Miriam Abdul Rashid. Coming up, CAC shines at the MSME Clinic. Incorporated trustees under Karma 2020 come under focus. Plus, how to register a limited liability company real time. We will be right back after the break. Do stay with us. A lot of companies in the past have not been filed their returns. And because before now, we are operating a semi automated system, we had a situation where new registration services were carried out electronically, while post registrations were done manually. And there was no system in place before now where such changes are reflected, where the database is updated, immediately these filings are made. So we have some gaps between the physical records, in some cases, and the electronic records. But because of the sheer size of these records, if we start from company number one to the last, that is not feasible. So we decided to focus on companies that are active and those that request for update to be made on their records. And we have made this known to the public that, look, don't wait until you have a transaction to do this. Send an email to a designated email address for us to update your record. We'll pull out the physical file and update so that when you come to do any transaction subsequently, you will have a seamless experience. We have close to 5 million entities, uh, companies, business names, and incorporated trusts. And we've now added limited partnerships and limited liability partnerships. You can imagine if we are going to pull out every file, it will be impossible to do that. So the companies you may be referring to are companies that have not actually requested for update. But we can have a list of these companies. My advice is if you try to access any information on your own and you now discover that what is in the database is not sufficient for you, just send us a letter. When you any request we receive from EFCC and other agencies, immediately we get this request. We pull out the files and update the database. So so let's have such a request. Welcome back. We start off with the efforts being made to improve the MSME experience in Nigeria. Aside from registering MSMEs, the Corporate Affairs Commission has over the years supported their growth by ensuring that they operate in accordance with the rules governing their formation. Consequently, a dedicated MSME desk was established to boost the Commission's activity at the Abuja Enterprise Area One Stop Arena. The CAC desk has been adjudged the most vibrant and most visited among other agencies at the Abuja Enterprise Agency premises. The Abuja Enterprise Agency recently organized the FCT MSME one-stop shop sensitization program and business clinics for MSMEs, where successful business operation guides and regulatory compliance for MSMEs came under focus. As usual, the award-winning CAC desk officer, Habu Bala, was on hand to provide regular tips on business registration, among other things. Thumbs up to the CAC and the Abuja Enterprise Agents. Moving on to Karma 2020, Elias, the game changer. Viewers may recall that since January 2021, the CAC commenced the implementation of the Karma 2020. Many changes and innovations have been introduced to simplify the registration of incorporated trustees as well as enhance transparency in their conducts. To get further insights on the new provisions and procedures for registration, management and regulation of incorporated trustees among others, let's now join Mr. Justin Nidia Biral, Director Compliance. Mr. Nidia, Justin Barrow, Director of Compliance, CAC. Many thanks for joining us again. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, today we'll be looking at the um, incorporated trustee. I know we did something on it in 2021, two years ago. Yeah, uh, that's true. But I know some things have changed. Well, until we get to where what has really changed. But talk us through about this concept of incorporated trustee. Well, uh, the concept has been a long uh, standing one. Okay. Uh, uh, in this country, mm -hmm. We had what 
was called the Land Perpetual Succession Act ordinance, which became an act. Okay. Uh, then from there now, in 1990, uh, the concept was taken uh, and defined as incorporated trustees and put under Part C okay. of the Companies and Allied Matters Act at that time. Now it is under Part F of the current act. Okay. Yes. So it has a history of changes. It had a history of changes mm. uh, from ordinance to act when we became independent. Mm. Then uh, it remains so as Land Perpetual Succession Act until 1990 when it became Part C of the Companies and Allied Matters Act. Okay. How is it different from other entities? For instance, the limited liability company, um, the LLP, um, the one-man business. How different is it? Well, what has been uh, a distinctive feature of yeah. the incorporated trustees mm. is that uh, when you think of uh, running what is called uh, a non-governmental organization, okay. a non-profit making organization, mm. that uh, recommend itself because part of the requirement is that uh, the aims and objectives should be restricted to non-profit making organizations. Okay. Yes. Oh. So that's the most important distinctive feature. Okay. Yes. Okay. Entities that are non-profit. And non-profit oriented. Okay. They okay. Vary either as religious organizations or. Uh, civil societies okay. or other forms of society. Generally, they are classified under the act as associations. Okay, all right. Um, so, so let's look at the, um, the, the registration process. Yeah. Is it the same thing with others? No, they are not, certainly. Okay. But uh, usually, uh, the, the primary area where every registration begins is that you do what is called name search and availability. Mm -hmm. Before we go for that, yeah. what kind of names are more appropriate, especially for associations, NGOs? Well, uh, th there is no restriction for names as such, apart from the fact that uh, uh, names that are against public policy. So I can go Medina Association. You can go Medina Association. So and it will long, be accepted. It will be accepted so okay. long as the name uh, does not go against public policy. Oh, okay. Uh, sometimes. Okay. And what is this um, public policy as public far as names are concerned? Uh, uh, first of all, if you want to look at it, like names that are uh, immoral on their face or okay. names that are, uh, suggest uh, fraudulent organizations okay. uh, or names that suggest uh, violent groups. Okay. Uh, so those ones are apparent on their face. Okay. They will violate what is called uh, public policy. Okay. Okay. So from the word go, the system will strike it off. Uh, you you look at it. There will be uh, individuals, what we call approving officers. Okay. That will look at the propriety of the names. Mm. Uh, once they don't fall within uh, appropriate acceptable limits. Okay. Uh, they will deny approval. Okay, so let's go back to the um, process of registration, yes. You must get the name right, like yes. every other entity. Yes. Okay, then? And after getting the name, mm. you do uh, what is called publication. Okay. Uh, in newspaper. Mm -hmm. That's one of the differences. Uh, that's okay. one of the difference. You do yeah. publication and you allow a period of 28 days okay. for people to make objections to the registration, if any. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, it is only after uh, the 28 days has elapsed uh, and there is no objections mm. or where there is an objection, uh, the objections has been uh, reviewed and uh, uh, a, a decision is taken that uh, the objection is not sustainable. Why 28 days? Well, 28 days is assumed that uh, uh, people who want to make objections okay. uh, are allowed. They're giving them ample time. Uh, ample time mm. to consider it a right objection. But then they say the devil is in the details. When well, you give people too long time, they begin to find fault where there is no fault. Well, uh, it's, it's not that it's a free reign. Okay. Uh, you, you are free to write objections, mm. but uh, the commission okay. will look at the objectives uh, critically. Mm. 
uh, if they are not sustainable, they will overrule. It will overrule the objections okay. and register the associations. Okay. If the uh, objection is sustained, mm. then uh, the applicant will be duly communicated. Okay. Yes. So what else? So after the period of 28 days mm. and there is no objections, the commission will register and issue a certificate. And okay. from the time certificate is issued, mm. Uh, the association will also be considered to be a legal person, like the company. So that's the the, the area okay. that they share with the company. They are both uh, legal personalities. Okay. Since it is non-profit um, um, organization or non-profit entity, so it means the registration will also be free? No, it's not free. <laughs> but uh, unlike uh, the, the company, mm. the limited liability company, uh, it has a fixed rate. Okay, so what is the fixed rate? The fixed rate is uh, the sum of 30,000. Okay, that's much higher, isn't not, it? Not really. Oh, okay. Not really. Okay. Particularly so, when you look at the details of what is involved. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what are the details? No, uh, that is all like we have said. Okay, uh, uh, okay. Because uh, probably what we have not said mm. is that uh, uh, when you are doing the publications, Okay. You give the name of uh, the trustees. Okay. Then you give you a summary of the aims and objectives yes. uh -huh. of the association. Okay. So that, for instance, uh, if uh, people look at the aims and objectives mm. and see that uh, they, they, they are not uh, uh, legal, okay. uh, people can raise objections on, on those. Okay. All right. Um, how do you know that it is, I, I'm not making profit somewhere? Well, by aims and objectives. Okay. Uh, you I can bring out an aim and objective, but <laughs> silently or somewhere down the line, I make profit. No, not really, because uh, first of all, uh, you have to put it in your constitution. Okay, that then I will not make profit. The constitution has to specify the aims and objectives. Okay. So once uh, you put in the objectives, mm. aims and objectives that suggest business, uh, you will be asked to remove those ones. Oh, okay. Else, then you're not qualified in the first place. Uh, else, no registration will be done for you. So now let's go to um, the position that was before and now. Um, the first one I am made to understand is that um, then you're allowed for one trustee, but today it has to be two, uh, two trustees. So what happened? Well, uh, it is thought that uh, the, the one-man trustees okay. could be problematic uh -huh. In the sense that, for instance, uh, if anything happens and uh, uh, that one trustee dies, okay, uh, it's like uh, you don't have a, trustee, a continuity. Yeah. Uh, you don't have a trustee in office. Okay. Yes. So, a trustee can be husband and wife. Yeah, there is no law that says that two people cannot two, run. Two, uh, a husband and wife. Or cannot, mother and daughter, or mother, cannot, or yeah, son once, and father, or father once, and son. Yeah, once they are qualified. Okay. Yeah, they can become trustees. Okay, okay. So that's the reason why you must have two trustees in case of eventuality. In case of eventuality. Okay. Yes. All right. So the second position is that um, they're required to file by annual statement of affairs in addition to filing annual returns. Why burden them too much? Well, uh, what people don't understand is mm -hmm. actually that uh, uh, because uh, there is involvement of people. Mm. Because you will notice that uh, the incorporated trustees most often mm. are registered to render uh, certain uh, services mm. to the society, mm. which uh, either the private sector or the government cannot adequately or properly perform. Okay. So because of what is called public interest mm. in the associations, mm. uh, it is required that... Uh, 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 you give you give members of the public mm. notice of the activities you are involved oh okay yeah so okay. that uh, people will know that okay. and also if there are changes if there are changes that have occurred either in terms of assets okay. acquired or in terms of key personnel mm. like the trustees if they have changed mm. or if uh, the management of the association has changed mm. or any other changes mm. that could be considered of public interest mm. then you are required to notify members of the public so that they will become aware 
okay. for the activities of the okay. And that period is period of every six months. You are supposed yeah, to come that, up with this that, um, that statement is, yeah. every six months. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you are supposed to file those statements every six six months. Okay. So in a year, you are filing a biannual statement twice. Twice. That's what it means. Okay. All right. So let's go to the power to suspend trustees. It wasn't there before. It wasn't. Why now there. give power to suspend? So if a husband and wife run an association and they have a quarrel, so the wife, husband can suspend the wife, or the wife can suspend the husband, depending on who has the power. Is it it? No, it's not that uh, <laughs> either of the trustees okay. suspend <laughs> each, <laughs> each other. Yeah. The power of suspension is uh, given to the Corporate Affairs Commission. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that is for the reasons that are properly uh, identified in the Act. Mm -hmm. But in summary form... So what yeah. amounts to suspension? Oh, well, a suspension is uh, the fact that uh, you will be asked to excuse yourself. Uh, from, what kind from, of crime will that, the trustee commit for him to get suspended? Well, uh, generically, okay. uh, we would describe it as abuse of, of uh, abuse of trust. Okay. Uh, that is the generic name. Mm, but okay. under that concept of abuse of trust, mm, mm. where, for instance, the trustees or the managers are, uh, have committed fraud, okay, uh -huh, or have uh, uh, diverted resources that are meant for activities of the association into their private pockets. Okay. Uh -huh. Those, or have gone away from uh, their objectives. Or have gone away from their objectives. Okay. So those are the few areas that we consider as abuse of trust. Okay. Uh, yes. Mm. yes. At what point does the commission determine abuse of trust? Well, uh, one would assume possibly one scenario is that uh, there could be, sometimes there could be petition. Okay, from members of the public? From members of the public okay. or even members of the organization. Okay. Sometimes also from what is called uh, intelligent information. Okay. Uh, the commission could have facts. Uh, what, is, is what should be emphasized is that uh, the commission always uh, acts on facts. Okay. And uh, there is also a requirement in the regulation okay. that uh, you, you have to investigate first. Okay, so how long does all of this take? Petition, investigation, and finally the suspension? Well, it's, it will be difficult to give a, a, time frame. A, a time frame. So it could go on for years? Uh, for, not, not, not really for years. Okay. Uh, it may not be that long. Okay. Uh, but uh, it is a requirement that uh, when people complain mm. or petition, Mm. For issues of fair hearing, okay. uh, you send the petition to those uh, that have been petitioned okay. and you ask for their comments. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. It is only then that you now take an informed decision. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. And there is also a requirement that uh, the commission, before it suspends the trustees, mm. should constitute what is called an investigative panel. And that panel should be headed by a lawyer okay. uh, that uh, has what we call 10 years post uh, call experience. Okay, at whose cost? The, the, well, the, 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 the cost is uh, borne by the commission oh, know, okay. because we don't expect. Okay, the person who is investigated <laughs> yeah, to or pay. Who is yeah. complaining okay. uh, to, to, to pay okay. for the cost of investing. We want members of the panel to be as objective as possible. Okay. And uh, what that means is that uh, the commission also should be prepared to foot their bills. Okay. So now let's go to the financial statement. Mm. After all, after by annual statement of affairs to annual returns, they now still have to file financial statement. Well, uh, what we could say categorically on that mm. is that uh, uh, before Kama 2020, mm. The position was that uh, if you are uh, an incorporated trustee yeah. and you collect uh, funding or you collect money from what is considered as a third party. Okay, or foreign donors. Whatever it is, okay. you collect money from donors. Okay. That's what we call third parties. Okay. Okay. Yes, you will be required to file annual return with financial statement. Okay. If not, if it is like a foundation mm. where you are the one that finances the Yes, I use my money to uh -huh. Then, at, under that law at that time, you are not required to file 
annual return on financial statement. Okay. But under this new legal regime, mm. uh, whether you are a foundation, uh, whether you collect money from donors. So even my own money, I have to state how I spend it. Yes, you have to. Uh, but it's my own money. Oh. Yes, that's the idea. That's the idea of that uh, one, uh, when you look at the financial statement, mm. you'll be able to establish whether uh, the, the money that is deployed has been channeled is, rightly is or channeled not. towards the pursuit of the objectives, mm. aims and objectives mm. of the association. Okay. Or they are being used for some other things. You know, there is uh, a problem in the wider society now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, of what we call uh, money laundering and yes. uh, uh, financing of terrorism. Yes. So for that, just even that reason alone, mm. there is need to scrutinize uh, the expenses and the source of funding for the association. Mr. Nadia, Justin Barrow, always a pleasure talking to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great insights there from Justin. Moving on to registration. Are you interested in registering a limited liability company to kickstart a business? Please come with us as we show you how to do just that seamlessly online. Company registration. To begin, reserve the company name that you intend to register and then proceed to click on start registration to begin. Step one, enter the details of the company. Click on save and continue. Step two, add the objects of the company. Click on save and continue. Step three, on the articles of association, you can either create your own articles of association or simply adopt the default articles of association provided. You can also edit each part of the default articles of association to fit your company's purpose. Click on save and continue. Step four, on the directors, enter the details of at least one director. If you want to hide your residential address from public record, click on the hide residential address from public record toggle button. Click on save and continue. Step five, on the secretary, this requirement is optional for small companies and you may skip the step by clicking on the click here link button to proceed. However, if you wish to add a secretary, click on the add secretary button enter the details of the secretary and click on save and continue. Step six, understatement of issued share capital. Add the share details and enter details of proprietor and click on save and continue. Note, you must allot the entire issued share capital. Step seven, on the persons with significant control. Enter the particulars of the person with significant control of the company. Step eight, understatement of compliance. If you are an applicant or an accredited agent other than a legal practitioner, fill in your details and click on save and continue, or you can skip this step. On the document upload, scan and upload all the documents labeled yes. Under the if required column and where the documents labeled optional applies to you, please scan and upload to avoid a query on your application. Click on save and continue to preview. Step nine, preview your entries and if satisfied, click on the proceed to payment in order to make payment. Remember to remain on the remitter page after you have received a confirmation of payment. Step 11, after payment, you will be redirected to your dashboard where you will make payment for your stamp duty. After making payment, your application will enter the pending panel on your dashboard on the registration. When your registration has been approved, your certificate will be automatically generated on your registered panel where you can download and print it. Wow, what are you waiting for? Hurry now to pre.cac.gov.ng to register. And that does it for this week's edition of the program, CAC Weekly. We hope you enjoyed watching. For comments and inquiries, please take advantage of our social media handles and our helplines. On Twitter, it's CAC Nigeria One. On Facebook and Instagram, it's Corporate Affairs Commission. Our email is cservice at cac.gov.ng. Our website is www.cac.gov.ng.
www.gov.ng and our helpline are 081-822-99016 or 081-822-98971 or 090-874-01598 or 090-874-01598. And 090-874-01600. Do join us next week for another interesting edition of the program. Same time, same station. From me, Mariam Abdurashid, and the whole team here, it's bye for now. <laughs>